Always think safety first. Do not operate or work on your machine without reading and understanding the operator and installation manuals. Spread pattern tests should be conducted prior to each spreading season, after any spreader maintenance, and periodically throughout the season. Spread pattern tests should also be conducted if there is a noticeable change in product size or shape and whenever applying a new product. Spread patterns can be affected by many factors including weather conditions, spinner speed, material characteristics, and overall condition and alignment of spinner discs, chain shields, and material divider. The spreader must be in good mechanical condition and properly adjusted before testing. First, make sure the fins are installed on the spinner disc correctly. Fin locations will vary depending on the model of the new leader spreader you are using. Refer to the operator's manual of your spreader for recommended locations. Second, put material in the spreader. If a multiplier is installed, then put the same material in the multiplier also. However, test each bin separately. Next, set the feed gate to deliver the required rate of material per acre. Set the gate opening based on your desired rate per acre according to the yield output calculator on newleadervip.com. The feed gate should be level and the indicator reflecting the actual feed gate opening. Be sure to pre-charge the conveyor prior to the spread pattern test. Proper spinner speed is very important to obtaining accurate spread patterns. The initial spinner speed setting will be determined based on the results of the material SGN, size, grade, and number, and crush strength test. The SGN, crush strength, and spread pattern test kits are now supplied with most new liter crop nutrient applicators. Now check your product density to determine material weight. Then verify the in-cab controller has the correct product density, spinner speed, swath width, and feed gate height information. Now adjust the starting spinner assembly position. To set the spinner assembly position, simply turn the hand jack and position the assembly according to the quick reference chart supplied with the spread pattern test kit. The new leader spread pattern kits consist of 21 collection trays, 120 foot of marked rope, two stakes, five flags, 21 test tubes, a funnel, data sheets, and density scale. Before beginning the test procedure, select an area that is approximately 120 feet by 400 feet and has a slope of less than two degrees. All testing should be performed when the wind velocity is less than five miles per hour. If wind is present, Testing must be done with the spreader traveling parallel within plus or minus 15 degrees to the wind direction. Next, uncoil the rope and fasten one end to the ground with the supplied stake. Pull the rope tight and fasten the opposite end with the other stake. Place all 21 collection trays with plastic grids installed on the ground at each marking on the rope. Place all the trays in a consistent position and as level as possible. Flags are provided to assist the operator in maintaining a straight path over the center tray. Also, a flag should be placed 75 feet prior to the trays where the conveyor would be engaged and 75 feet after the trays where the conveyor would be disengaged. Now position the spreader at the beginning of the course so that the vehicle will straddle the center collection tray. Begin by driving the spreader completely through the course at normal operating speeds. Make only one pass over the collection trays and collect the material. Using the funnel provided with the kit, Transfer the contents of each collection tray into its corresponding test tube beginning at one end of the trays and working towards the opposite end. Record the volume of each test tube on the data sheet provided in the spread pattern test kit under the corresponding tray position. It is recommended that only one adjustment be made between each set of test samples taken. 
repeat this process until a desired spread pattern is attained. Consult the new leader spread pattern manual when making adjustments. For accurate results, be sure to drive through the pans the same direction and collect the material the same way each time. Now that you have attained a desirable spread pattern, record the results on the data sheet. Then use the recorded information to determine the optimum swath width. First, locate the points on the left and right sides of the graph where the material is half the volume of the zero foot mark, or center tube. The distance between these two points represents the swath width. When blended fertilizers are being applied, a visual inspection of the samples should be made to determine whether the blend within the effective swath width is consistent with the desired blend. If the blend is not consistent, a narrower overall swath width should be used. Now that an overall swath width has been determined, perform a triple pass to confirm the spread pattern overlap. If a triple pass shows the pattern is heavy in the overlap area, then you must either slow the spinner speed down to create a narrower swath width or increase the distance between the driving centers. If the triple pass shows the pattern is light in the overlap area, then you must either increase the spinner speed to create a wider swath width or decrease the distance between the driving centers. When an acceptable pattern is confirmed, document all settings and store in an easily accessible place. Also store this information within the controller itself if the controller software allows. Again, it is recommended that a spread pattern test be performed for all products. It is also recommended to pattern test products at the lowest rate and again at the highest rate that you would apply. For more information and safety instructions, reference the operator and parts manual at highwayequipment.com.